then finally, I said, all right, I will do this technology provided I be given the means of ensuring that no serious harm will come from this technology to mankind again. So what I do, my friends, into every crystal that we make, I put a safety valve in the crystal. If you abuse the crystal in a negative way, it will shatter. The tip will pop off, and if you really fool around, it will crack right in half. And that is my protection for the good of mankind. It's that serious and I'm that sincere in what I am saying to you. <clears throat> the effects of what you can do with a crystal like this would frighten most people. But there's nothing to fear when you act in a loving, sincere way. Because you're working for the good of the person and not for your control or manipulation over them. <coughs> yes? Uh, are you the only person who can make <laughs> Right now on the earth plane, yes. Yeah, Dr. Laskow, who I trained, he's a medical doctor, he was with me for over three and a half, four years. He decided to go on his own. He has a man cutting crystals for him without my knowledge. I just let him go. But can you control him? I won't control anyone. I just let him go. You see, I, have, I will be sharing information with you that, I've, as I said, I've given to no one before. What I call core information, root information. The implication behind my words is tremendous. When you watch the tape, when you listen to the audio tapes, you will see the depth to which I've had to go in thinking. I pray each morning for guidance. I work with all the power and the strength of the technical and scientific training that God has given me throughout my lifetime. I am a material scientist. I was with IBM for 27 years in the material science department working in math. The study of magnetism, of phosphorus, of liquid crystals. I've put intensive technical scientific study on the forces of nature. But these are like, my friends, toys. Please, like toys compared to what you can do with this. I cannot be more sincere. Do you see what I mean? I'll give you an example right now. In fact, I will never do it again. I was in England invited by Sir John Whitmer to the May lectures. I went on for a number of years. And that was in 1974 or 5. 75. I had done many, many years of work on man-plant communication. Using a plant as a transducer for the forces of mind. I was approached by psychics to have me subject myself to hypnotic treatment by uh, Ali, uh, Andrea Poharic. 
And I said, no, there was no necessity. I do not want it. And these girls came at me again and again during the interim periods as we were going through the meeting. <clears throat> Finally, it was my turn to lecture. And I gave the lecture on the plant experiments, and then we went into the main rooms, about 150 people, for a demonstration on the working with a plant in using it as a transducer. Now, to use this, I must go with my mind into the plant by drawing my breath in. And the moment I draw my breath in, I'm totally vulnerable to everybody around because my aura <coughs> is pulled in down to a very, very thin envelope, and a person who has psychic ability or knowledge can go into my auric field and attach, just like a, a, an insect or a beetle. Well, Andrea Poharich was in my left-hand side. The other girl was where, like where you are right now, and the third girl was on <coughs> my right, so they had triangulation on me. <coughs> I stood there, drew my breath in, and as soon as I drew my breath in, I was hit with a blow, right here in the chest. And my chest caved in. It's just like you took a big iron clamp and squeezed you. I couldn't breathe. I stood there, and I held my breath. I've learned pranayama. I've practiced it now for many, many years, which means holding breath. This man does it also. <laughs> and I waited till my body, I felt the equilibrium coming back in, then I could let my breath out and catch a small breath, but I had only a fragment of my original breath. I said, I must call a halt to the meeting. I'm not feeling well. <coughs> Two women, like you, who were just about the distance you were, saw what happened to me. They were healers. So I went out of the room. <coughs> they, in turn, followed me, said, can I help you? I said, yes. I've been psychically attacked. And so one woman stood on the left-hand side and the other one on the right-hand side. And we breathed together. And they breathed, one person breathed out, another one breathed in, so I was doing this. And gradually, as the doing the breath this way, I could get now the equilibrium back. One woman had her hand on one shoulder, the other one had my hand on the other shoulder. And with their alternated breathing, I could break the bond, the stricture. It was just like somebody put a steel band around me. And gradually it broke, <coughs> and I found my chest opened up, and I could breathe, and I went back into the meeting. The pressure was so great on my chest that after the lecture the next day, a man there who was a teacher on Ralphing, I had a two and a half hour session on Ralphing in my chest. And he had to work two and a half hours to break the <coughs> strictures in the muscular tension that was here. <clears throat> and when he did, suddenly all the chest cave, cavity opened up and suddenly my chest was open and I could breathe. But I was mad. I was emotionally disturbed, really furious because somebody deliberately, willfully did this. So I picked up a crystal exactly like this. I said, I'll show you now what can be done with a crystal. I poured that anger into that crystal. Breathed in and then started to focus on to the audience <coughs> and started to pulse with my breath. And when I came to alignment with this girl, I released my breath through the crystal. She and the chair started to oscillate. As I held the crystal, it just oscillated this way, it levitated, about five feet in the air. About the entire height from where you were sitting here up, and it was up there, it was 150 people watching. 
I held the crystal this way, and then when I lifted the crystal, she came crunching down. Everybody saw it. Not a person came to me after the meeting and said a word to me. I've seen this happen so many times. You see a phenomenon and you, you blot it out of your mind and do not acknowledge it. But when I returned home, I took the crystal, recut it, and I will never make these angles again. I don't want that type of power. Because, <clears throat> and the reason, and the only reason <coughs> I'm now giving this to you, I've done levitation with this. And the reason I'm telling you is my belief is the ancient minds knew exactly what I had done with a crystal like this. And I believe they levitated the stones into place in many of these large edifices. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I saw this 130 pound girl and that chair who just lifted into the air from just a pulsed breath from the crystal. So never, never work with anger in your heart. Always clear your mind, work in a quiet, loving way. Because you can transfer that feeling to another person and they carry that with them and they really don't know then what has happened to them. All right. When is a crystal not a crystal? I can take now this crystal, put it into a furnace, and heat it up to 1300 degrees centigrade. <coughs> it becomes molten. The forces that bind these unit cells together are destroyed. They let go and they flow around and just form these silicon dioxide molecules. I take this then, this molten mass of silica made from this, pour it into an exact mold which is like this. And it comes back to exactly this shape again. Will that crystal, or is that a crystal? Yes or no? What do you think? Why not? Because of the, the structure. The structure is not there. That's right. There's an external structure, but not uh, an external form. It has form, an external but form, but not the internal <coughs> symmetry. Is there any translation? Smith. Good. Please. I've been hit with this. Uh, as I get more and more perfect crystals like this, they say, well, this looks like a piece of glass. Mm. Is it real? <laughs> God, I'd like to clobber them and put them over my knees and spank them. I, it costs me months and months of work to find pieces of crystal like this that I can cut them from. They're very, very hard to come by. But... When you take this crystal and melt it, <clears throat> it has lost its order. It has lost its total <clears throat> purpose in life. And what you end up with is an empty shell. Visualize your house with all of the rooms in it. And now you take your house and you melt it and then you put it back into form and just have the outer shell. You just have a shell, but nothing inside the house. It's just an empty box with no structure, nothing. That's exactly what a piece of glass is. You've turned this quartz, the single crystal, into glass. These are now moving in all different directions. They do not hold a charge. They do not have the capacity 
of cohering the energy of mind. Does that answer many, many questions now? If you cool it, <coughs> if you cool it very, very slowly, it streams slowly from 850 degrees. Ah, uh, now you come to something else again. It would regain. It uh, would start to crystallize. But what you're doing, you're allowing by the very, very slow cooling, the unit cell to form. And once that unit cell forms, it then recrystallizes. But I'm take, I did not say that. <laughs> I said, you take that hot milk, pour it into a mold. Rapid cooling, there is no chance. And there are two states to this, to the quartz. It has two different crystallographic states depending upon the rate of cooling that you, as you take it from the melt on down. Or I can take this quartz and I can heat it up. I can change the internal symmetry just by taking it up to a critical state. It will change. Now, <coughs> the color that you see in quartz is the result of impurities. If I get iron, iron salt, Fe2O3 iron oxide, I get amethyst, the bluish color that one sees in the beautiful amethyst stones. If I get a ferrous state, I will get the citrine or yellow crystals that you will see from quartz. I give this, I'm writing a book now on crystals, on crystal therapeutics. I cover this in each chapter. Minute traces of metals create a cosmic influence. Please, I repeat, minute traces of metals in a crystal create cosmic influences. One does not have to have this in the crystal in order to produce this influence. One can take a small amount of metal, <clears throat> I'm talking now, for example, the tissue sauce, the Schussler tissue sauce, you put a drop in solution on the crystal like this. Put your finger on it, pulse your crystal. Now you have that metal influence in this crystal. But you have it from an etheric standpoint. You have it from a standpoint where it can act on this body, not on the physical body. And with that, you can erase it again and release it. But once you have it inside the crystal lattice, you can't release it. You're limited with a colored stone to those limitations that that coloration imposes. Please, uh, are there any questions on this? This is very, very important. You see what I'm saying? You understand the Not importance exactly. of this? Not exactly. What? I don't Not exactly. Know. All right, dear. You go to books on crystals, where people talk about use of crystals in healing. They speak on all different stones having healing properties. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yes. You don't have to go through a lot of stones. You don't have to use ruby. You don't have to use uh, amethyst. You can do all of that with this. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. With one crystal, you can take on all of their properties. It's a 
very, very important. It saves a lot of money. <laughs> because you spend a lot of money for gems, and it is not necessary. Does that help now? Yes. Now you see what's in back of it. Yeah. <coughs> but when you wear a certain type of... Uh, That's, I didn't come into that. Okay. <coughs> when you wear it, it's a different thing. Yeah. When you wear a gemstone, you take it and put it onto your body and bring it into this. Now you're linking to cosmic influences. Now if you want those type of influences, it becomes an asset to you. Now you're building those forces in your body. They become important for your total well-being. But 